fresh water is scarce very scarce even though 70% of the earth surface is covered with water only 2.5% of that water is fresh water in times to come fresh water will become even more precious this nila hall once used to supply water for delhi's first city lal kot hundreds of years ago but in modern times it fell into disrepute and became a dumping site since then scientists from the university of delhi have worked hard to restore this lake to its near pristine glory treating effluent water with zero electricity gravity and plants can this economical way of cleaning sewage water be replicated across india behind me is the neela hoss lake one of the many lakes of delhi once it was highly degraded today it is near pristine today we have with us yasir arafat namaskar yasir yasir is a geographer turned ecologist turned ecological restoration specialist and somebody who has worked on the restoration of the neela hoss project and converting it into a biodiversity park uh, yes sir bhai how much water is there in this lake and what is the quality of this water right now sir it is a huge lake depth in the center is 9 feet in the margin it is up to 5 feet and it holds lots of water and when we talk about it as a functioning wet, what i am uh, telling you is a restored lake totally functioning wetland ecosystem we have some more than 100 species of birds 25 species of dragonflies 25 species of butterflies are there that is why we call it functioning wetland ecosystem we have uh, three four species of fishes also what was the state of this lake in times before today if you can relate to me sir it was in 2015 when i came here first day it was a um, just walk and look about what is actually neela hoss is and we saw it was a silted lake and it become a dumping site for the people this road whosoever passes through the road used to throw the dump whatsoever i have seen dead dogs and many many things which i cannot even was there water of. here when when you saw? very small amount of water passing through the lake and it was a, a bit of uh, wherever there was a uh, water it was full of water hyacinth and it become a place for robbers nobody you want to come in the site just because of the terror of robbing and theft and slowly when we came here there were people what to say threatening us ke why we are here so many things were there and it was totally silted right now what you are seeing is that time it was that uh, uh, on this level it was silt we desilted the lake up to the depth of 9 feet in the center as i told you and so, in the so, so you how did you remove the silt with the help of machines poklin machines and uh, this it was not easy sir first day when the contractor came he started working he unable to do it he ran away after leaving half of the work 
Then second contractor he denied. After taking the tender, he denied totally. Actually, the civil work of this area is done by the DDA. So the third contractor came here. He said, I will do. Then he bring the two big Poklin machine, four JCBs, and he started working with us. The supervision of this park and the restoration process and the landscaping was done in the presence of Professor C.R. Babu, who is the whole soul. The idea before, uh, behind the constructed wetland is from Professor C.R. Babu and mine was the learning process. So you did the execution, he was the brain. Yes. Now can you tell me, let us go step by step. Uh, how many plants are there in this lake and this surrounding biodiversity? Can you name some of them also? One day we have planted 10,000 plants. Those plants are like we have Dalbergia sisu and we have Butia, we have Acacia catechu, Kathekapir, and we have uh, Kadam, uh, Adaina, so many species are here and we have grasses like Hydrobogon and, and this uh, Sankras grass and we have Balraria, Justitia adathoda, highly medicinal plant we have seen. These are the plants here. We have planted and what about, what about birds? Because we can hear so many birds here. How many bird species when, do sir, you see? When sir, we were here only few urban bird species were here. Urban bird species were like common mena and crows. But now with the this beautiful forest, we have more than 120 species of birds recorded. In the lake, just before few days, there were more than 1,000 uh, migratory birds. Can you name some of the birds which can be seen here? Some of the more beautiful or the rare birds? Rare birds, uh, just a few days before, we have seen a verdi tear flycatcher, a passage migrant. We have seen a Eurasian wryneck. It is also a uh, very rarely sighted birds. Otherwise, in the wetlands, we have common poachers. We have, this year, for the first time, we have seen the red-crested poacher, which is basically loves clean water. And we have common poachers, get walls. They are from Europe and Siberia. And many a times we have seen geese also here. Uh, Yasir Bhai, what were the level or numbers of wetlands in Delhi lakes and what is the general condition? You have restored this one. Sir, what I know is Delhi used to known as uh, city of lakes, more than six, seven hundred lakes were there, but slowly, slowly all diminished. And one we have restored, there are one Hoskas Lake is there, they are restoring it to this is the condition. And what are the kind of fishes, amphibians in the water right now? We have a very special type of frog here, Rana Tigrina, a huge big size frog and skittering frogs also. And in fishes, we have a snake head, Chana serrata, and we have mulli. Uh, Yasir Bhai, I saw Neil guy dropping, blue bull droppings. What are the different types of mammals which are seen here and how do they kind of survive in this small area? Yeah, it's a 10 acre of area, but adjoining area is the Sanjay One forest. It is almost more than 1000 acres. And most of the Neil guys, jackals, they live there. Neil guys, blue bull. It is the largest antelope of India. And what you have seen, the dropping, Nilgai mark its territory by dropping in one area. So it comes again and again, male of the uh, species comes again and again on the same spot for... Defecation. Yeah, defecation and marking. So they come from Sanjeevan to get a beautiful lake surrounding. And I've seen the Nilgai even going into the water and taking some type of wetting itself. So all of this from a highly degraded condition, now where you see birds, mammals, all living in this biodiversity park? Yes, many fold they have increased in last five years. And initially we used to see two, three birds, but right now many bird watchers are coming, photographers are coming to take these beautiful birds in the beautiful surrounding. Having seen this restored lake, let us now go and see the scientifically constructed wetland which helps in the cleaning of the sewage water and creates this beautiful ambience for a 21st century lake in the midst of 
अर्बन न्यू डेली लेट्स गो so this is roughly where the sewage ah, water this enters this is first oxidation pond and this one is the second oxidation let's take a look at the water in chloride this is where the sewage enters i have an empty glass and now let me fill up the water and you can see the condition of the water this is the condition of the water as it is entering the neela hoz restoration zone it's smelling horrible the color is black we will go out and see and match this after it passes through the constructed wetland from the other side of the lake we saw how the neela hoz looks like today but for it to reach this situation there has been several restoration steps which have been done we are now standing in the midst of what is called a constructed wetland and to explain the science behind this constructed wetland dr yasir how does the water enter what is the condition of water when it enters into your area at neela hoz sir the water the sewage point from where the sewage is visible is just 200 meter above from our first oxidation pond this is a iuac center through the iuac center the sewage water is coming through a natural drain and after just finishing the boundary of iuac center the sewage water gets collected into our first oxidation pond which is 50 meters in length and 30 meters wide we so what is the what is the chemical condition of water when it enters into your area sir it is the first initial stage of water bod is around 70 cod is also about that This so that is permissible is levels or not, not permissible? Not permissible levels, sir. You cannot even nothing grows there. No life form. That water condition doesn't support any life. But when the water get collected in our first oxidation pond with light, the algae started to generate the oxygen, and where the bacteria started working, decomposing the silt there. and the bacterial biomass started floating there which is visible and slowly all particulate matter and even we have meshes before that before entering the uh, sewage water in our oxidation pond and when the water comes to our second oxidation pond it is almost visibility 70% clean because most of the silt get settled uh, particulate metal uh, particulate solids get settled in first place and then the water enters in our oxidation point pond 2 from two sources two so areas. when when the water enters your area it is black in color does it smell how does it smell in our oxidation pond one it is black in color with typical smell typical sewage smell see typical sewage smell yes and from there in the oxidation pond by bacterial and algal growth it gets oxygenated yeah and most of the oxygen gets into the water when the water passes through our channel with the ridges the turbulence is taking place the aeration is taking place oxygen is getting dissolved into the water so so the 1 million liters per day water which is entering first goes into one oxidation pond then it goes to second oxidation yes. pond In and then you have an incline over which you have certain pebbles and ridges, ridges through which the water flows yes. and what does it do when the water comes from our first oxidation pond to second in first place most of the solid get settled there are meshes where big solid like bottles plastic that get separated we manually remove it 
when the water comes to our second oxidation point the algae started releasing the oxygen and the bacteria started working decomposition takes place and the bacterial biomass started floating which we have to remove later on manually and then water enters into our channel why we have this channel actually in most of the constructed wetland we don't need channel actually we want to construct our wetland just due to this bridge we don't have sunlight going there so we made this channel just like a trial and error method what to do we have limited amount of space so we made this 33 meter long channel and later on we noticed that this channel did a miracle because it is uh, uh, dissolving more oxygen into it the is, water it is like a rivulet yeah. where you have little well, rapids well, you have well, created right? and oxygen is getting Correct. absorbed into the yeah. water yeah. and when it comes here again there are channels, channels here what is this? and the water is flowing from a height okay. and you see the foam is there this yeah. is the sulfate in the water Johan, we are using the detergent that is the detergent even these detergents phosphates and sulfates phosphates and sulfates and these detergents are being as a nutrient used by these plants so and here also on, you are essentially the water is getting cleaned as we see as they go over these stone pebbles yeah through the stones most of the bigger particles particular solids they are getting settled into these tanks and the clean water is passing through so finally from this it enters into that area where we can see the green that grass. That particular area we call it as a main constructed wetland and our sir professor Babu call it as a magical plant and I'll tell you the detail in detail what are these magical plants. Let's go and see those. Yasi Saab, we are standing in the middle of what you call the actual constructed wetland. What is happening here and what do these plants do? Sir, this is our constructed wetland which is approximately 30 meter by 30 meter one segment and 15 meter by 20 meter another segment and in which we have ridges with different types of gravels, smaller in, in the starting, from where the water enters, a bigger size gravel. Where the water coming here, in the last stage, the gravel size is smaller. We have different species of plants, like this one. This is a magical plant. Professor Babu, I always take his name. Professor Babu call it as a, all these plants as a magical plant, which can convert BOD into, from 40, 70 to 4, COD even uh, 50 to 4, in just matter of 23 to 24 hours. What are these plants? What is that plant which we see here? This is cypress. And, and what, how does it, does it root helps or what yeah. does it help? What happens? Most of the time, in, since classhood, we have been studying that in the environment, plant more trees. What happens? It will give oxygen, clean the air. But we take a very little uh, to speak very little about the plants, aquatic plants. What aquatic plant does? What all we are using in our kitchen? What all we are defecating even? That is coming in our sewage. And the root system that this rhizomes and some are fibrous root, they are holding millions and millions of bacteria about which we don't know. What they are doing? They are taking everything coming in the water and see the growth of this. You will find in a clean water area, in a good wetland, if you'll find these plants, they were not as good as they are here because they are getting plenty of... What, what is this particular plant? Here? This is Phragmitis, sir. And this also helps in cleaning? Yeah. There is even nitrate, sulfate, many things. There. And what is this, this plant here? This is, leaf? you know, uh, we did ourselves an experiment. Okay, there was a smell in it. There was always a smell in a sewage water, but there was more smell during the initial time. And that was the learning process for us. Then we introduced this uh, Altenanthra plant and slowly the smell diminishes. What are these plants? This is Typha. The rhizome of this plant can fix many things like sulfate, nitrate, and even it's a filter. It holds millions of bacteria under it. 
which convert pH, changes the pH in 24 hours. Now, can you compare for me what I'm seeing and what feels like is a sewage treatment plant. Can you compare how much would be the cost of treating 1 million liters of sewage per day in an STP plant and in this? Sir, STP plant, I think it's 100 times expensive than this. What the would be the cost of? Cost one... of making a STP plant for treating 1 MLD or say 20 MLD is same. You have to make a big infrastructure, lots of machine, aerators, many things. And then the next uh, negative point about this, we have to keep that silt which we are uh, come, uh, collecting from it. Here what is happening, all these plants, these plants are growing with that silt. So they are fixing the carbon dioxide yeah, also? Yeah, fixing the carbon dioxide. Within the retention time of this constructed wetland is somewhere between 24 to 30 hours in different different ways. Sometimes uh, six to eight hours in oxidation pond, then in filtration zone, then in constructed wetland, and this is our first oxidation, first wetland. Here also, after passing through our cascade, the water enters into the first wetland. Any particulate matter, small solid, if left out, gets settled. Here. So all of this is being cleaned, a natural system. Yes, sir. No use of electricity. Nothing. Only the gradient available. From the oxidation pond to our main wetland, the gradient is 1.3 meter. So you're it? using gravity as your tool for this. Tool thing. for providing the flow. Yeah. And you're not using electricity at all. Not at all. No. People are thinking sometimes that we are introducing the bacteria. No. Bacteria is uh, naturally coming in the root system of these plants. So how, how is the water? Can you see, see, see. If you could see. Can you hold? Just I'll tell you from here. Smell it, sir. Just open sewage water, open sewage is visible just 200 meters from here. And here you can see. If somebody by mistake enters into it, it will see, think that it is a stream flowing in a, some remote area. Let us now listen to what legendary ecologist Professor C.R. Babu, who works at the University of Delhi and is the brain behind this Neela Hawes restoration project has to say. The constructed wetland system developed at Neela Hawes Biodiversity Park treats 1 million liters per day raw sewage into clean water that has the same quality as that of a tap water. Now that clean water enters into what you call Neela Hawes Lake and now the lake attracts hundreds of migratory birds belonging to 20 species. You can see at least 200 birds at present right away in the what you call the stored lake. The Neela horse behind us looking clean and having water in it from no water to water in the Neela horse tank. Uh, Yasir Sahib, we've seen this experiment at Neela horse. Can it be replicated? And are you replicating it somewhere on a big scale? Yes, sir. After the successful story of Neela horse, in 2019, we have been given 11 drains in the floodplain of River Yamna near Jamia, near Kalandi colony where we are treating 11 drains, we are making 11 constructed wetland in which two are started functioning. 15 MLD and 10 MLD respectively in two drains we are treating and one biggest drain that is carrying 300 MLD of raw sewage, we have already made 70% of the work has been done. Within coming six months, that drain will also started working. So and that will also be like a constructed wetland where there is no use of electricity and you are treating sewage to give clean water which flows into the Yamuna? Absolutely. No electricity is, uh, will be used, only gravity, gradient and we are treating with the help of gravels and plants. Having seen this Neela horse and as Mr. Yasir explained, 
there is replication happening of this particular experiment. I picked up raw sewage water as it enters this particular Neela hose. Let me now go and show you how the water looks like when it enters this lake and is there a visual comparison. Let's go. Let us now see the water quality as we have in the Neela Horse Lake. This is the raw sewage water as it enters Neela Horse. Black and the smell is horrible. Let me now fill up water as it is having cleaned through the constructed wetland at Neela Horse. This is the water as the final product through the constructed wetland. Clean and does it smell? No, it doesn't. It smells of fresh water. Dirty water, clean water. Can this experiment be replicated on large scales in many cities? For this is really what is a circular economy. From waste, wealth is being created at almost zero cost. Sewage treatment plants are large civil construction monstrosities. A constructed wetland is a natural, environment-friendly way of cleaning water. Dirty water, clean water. Clean the natural way. Keep watching India Science.